Hey, how's it going? It's Miles here at Tactile Hive, and it's Thursday, so that means it is live fire day. We're going to validate what you did throughout the week with your dry fire and work on isolating our trigger finger. All right, for live fire today, we are working on isolating our trigger finger. And hopefully you took the dry fire exercises seriously. That will make what we do today much easier. Isolating our trigger finger, we are going to use the dry fire drill that you were doing, the second one, to show that you can do this, all right? And to work on isolating your trigger finger with live ammo. Because as I mentioned in week two, whenever we add live ammo, even though the drill is relatively simple and the dry fire drill is simple, for some reason people get nervous and that could cause them to perform like they weren't when they were dry firing. So we're going to be doing this drill here, I'm dry right now, and we're gonna be aiming at a small target from a very close distance, one yard for example. And you wanna have a defined target that is very small. Here I have a one inch paster. And because you got used to holding your gun dry fire like this, it should not be too nerve wracking, okay? You got used to holding your firearm without shaking too much. Now, don't worry if you were still a little bit shaky, we're gonna do some, we're gonna have some safety measures in place so no one gets hurt, okay? But what we wanna do is start off with this. So I'm going to get my Glock here. You can use any firearm. I'm dry right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the mag, rack a round in the chamber and then be safe here, keep the muzzle in safe direction, fingers off the trigger. Now this is, I'm gonna take my magazine out from the magwell, okay? So there is no magazine, I can only take one shot, all right? So in case, you know, in the unlikely event that your gun falls after you take the shot, you're not gonna hurt anyone because there's no bullets in the gun, okay? There's no rounds. So what you're going to do is you can use your support hand to help get the web of your hand across, okay? Hold with your thumb, okay? So you should be kind of like a crab claw here, pinching. And now you're going to touch your trigger with your finger, but do not put any pressure. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a close distance, you know, less than a yard away if you want to, get your sights on target, prep your trigger, and you're going to mentally focus on just pulling your trigger finger straight to the rear. Just the trigger finger is going to move, nothing else. So I'm looking at that small target, Okay, the wind is moving the target a little bit, so it might be off, but I'm going to just slowly press. And you'll see the round went directly in the center of the paster, okay? And I am safe right now. There's no other rounds here. And so this is something that is going to teach you, even with live rounds, to not get nervous and just move your trigger finger. That's the whole purpose of this drill here. And it'll validate that you can do this. So I'm gonna do it once again here. So what you're going to do is I'm going to load the mag here, rack the slide, everything's safe here, finger off the trigger, okay? Muzzle in safe direction. I'm gonna remove the magazine. So now I only have one bullet in the chamber. If I drop the gun, for, you know, accidentally, nothing's going to happen after I shoot, you know, because the round's gonna be shot. So I'm here, I'm gonna use my support hand to help me crab claw here, just pinch with the web of my hand, my thumb. Now I'm going to put my trigger finger, okay, on the trigger, no pressure, and I'm just going to move my trigger straight to the rear, keeping myself steady, sights on target. Okay, I'm waiting for the wind to die down, and then I'm going to pull ever so slightly. And again, I hit that paster. So once you do this a few times, you can do this, you know, 10 times, 15 times, 20, whatever makes you comfortable here, or however, don't try to rush this and follow safety habits. What's going to happen now is this, okay? We are going to rehash here, but now I'm not gonna take the mag out. Now you're gonna put two of your hands together, okay? A, a good grip, any which way you know how, then everything's going to be the same. You can prep your trigger if you'd like, okay? And you're going to mentally focus on moving your trigger finger exactly how you did the previous reps with just one hand. So I'm here, I'm just moving my trigger finger and it's in the center. I reset and prep just like we talked about. Okay, so I'm not, I didn't pin my trigger to the rear. After I broke the shot, I came off of it. So I'm here, I'm gonna do it again. Just moving my trigger finger. 
and I reset and prep. So you'll see that the whole idea is you can do this even when you had no fingers on, you didn't have the sympathetic movement from your three amigos, you can do this now with two hands because you're remembering the feeling of just isolating the trigger figure. Now, you can do two yards here. I can move back just a little bit and everything is the same. And you will see that, you don't have to go that fast, but you're going to see that your accuracy should dramatically improve once you have this feeling down. And as you move back, of course it's going to get more difficult, but based on your skill level, you're going to see that as you continue to do this and really hone in on just moving your trigger finger, little by little, through weeks of training, days and weeks of training, you'll be able to move further and further and further back while maintaining accuracy. So what you're going to do again is you're going to start with one round in the chamber, Okay, I have one round in the chamber right here. Start from a very close distance, crab claw it. You're gonna take one shot here. Okay, so I hit my target. There's nothing, I'm dry right here. After you do that a couple times, then you can move further back or stay there. But now you're gonna keep your mag in and try to keyhole all of your shots by just prepping your trigger and moving your trigger finger. That first shot I anticipated a little bit, okay? But that's something that I corrected on the subsequent shots. And anticipation is something that we'll cover later on. Right now we're focusing on just isolating the trigger. Even if you're not hitting the pacer, don't feel like it's the end of the world. What we're looking for is your accuracy to dramatically improve. So if you were shooting all over here, what we're looking for is a tighter group, okay? So I've been shooting for quite a while now, so that's why I'm able to hit the pacer. If you're not at that level yet, we're not looking for that. We're looking for improvement. So those are the two live fire drills to add to your practice. They are really going to help you isolate your trigger finger. Now, after you do these two drills, you can also add on things that we've done from week one and week two. It's not necessary, but if you want to, you can. But this should be your primary focus, okay? Just working on isolating your trigger finger. But what I mean by adding on to it, you can also start from here, just like we did. So I'm not gonna take a shot here, I'm dry. But what you're going to do is pretend I was live, you can present, and then break the shot like that if you want to add a third layer. But if you're still having difficulty isolating, I wouldn't recommend it for now, okay? Just have your gun presented first and just work from there. But if you are comfortable, then you can start here from compress ready, push out, break that shot. But as you do so, just move the trigger finger. That wraps up our live fire session for this Thursday. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. I will see you next week as we continue to week four of this series.